Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Um, I have a video blog that I have need to put together I made yesterday. It's again um, uh, September 2nd, 2022. But I got a couple records in. Today is also Celebrate Today in a way, the first King's X album since 2008. Um, three Sides of One. I ordered it and a lot of people ordered it um, on Amazon, pre-ordered it, and they haven't received it and it got pushed back like a month. So a lot of people have been canceling the order, I just did that myself. I'm going to maybe check a few local retailers over the next week or two. But um, So that's one big deal. So I'll eventually, and I'm going to be doing the King's X series after I finish Fate's Warning, which will probably be, it could be another week to two weeks. I will be doing it probably in the, within the next two weeks. I'll be doing starting King's X, which I'm excited about. So. But I'm going to show, so I can just, I, I guess, briefly talk about that. Some other records that came out recently. The King's X album, I'm liking after only hearing it once. I'm, you know, that's about, I, I have a lot I will probably say about it. I need to still take more of it in. But, um, you know, to be in my most anticipated record and, and be in 14 years, I have I have some thoughts about it. But I guess I'm, I'm still a fanboy, so I'm happy, really happy that we just got another record. We might be getting another record because I know one point is going to be a double. Um, so there's probably a lot of music that didn't end up on it. Um, so, but here's some records that I did pick up recently. I found this on Discogs. Sadly, I have not heard much of it, but um, this is uh, something I've been seeking on CD more than on 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 uh, vinyl. But I found it on vinyl for a pretty affordable price. It's the No Two album, which uh, you know most people don't know. No two, no, I haven't heard of this, this band. Um, it's two guys, really. It was in the ni late 1980s. Robert Ferris and Chris Kello, with a K. Um, it's weird, I, di I didn't bring them. I, this, this shit, the person I got this on Discogs included like a two other records inside that for shipping, for packing materials. One was like a church, like a Christian thing, and the other one was a record with John Denver as a side man. But this is a promo, actually. But... So, No Two. Who's No Two? Like I said, it's Robert Ferris and Chris Kello. But Robert Ferris co-wrote and played with Kevin Gilbert. Kevin Gilbert is actually... He produced this and he plays um, keyboards, some guitar, and some drum programming. Also, you have Michael Abaud, who's from, I believe, Giraffe as well, and Stan Cody from Giraffe. So you have... Because Robert Ferris was part of Giraffe at various points and co-wrote a few of the songs for Giraffe. This is almost like a, an offshoot of Giraffe in a way. And this was, in effect, released after the last Giraffe album in 1989. Um, but, you know, I've only heard a couple songs on YouTube. Um, I, again, I'm not using my turntable at this point, of course. It's like, i got to basically sell this house and find a new house to do that. But, I'm, you know, the CD is for sale on, from some people on, well, eBay and um, Discogs, but most of them are, you know, across the pond, are over in Europe and other parts of the world, and the only ones that I've seen in America, and all of them really have been, you know, 30, what the hell, they, they, they've been, you know, <laughs> multiple times more than this vinyl, so I just figured, well, I'll just buy the vinyl anyway. Um, so, you know, and I've heard Robert Ferris, what was, there was one song that I heard him do live with, like, Caviar or something like that. He's got a really good voice, and there's a song, was a demo that Giraffe did, I know that was on Call Me Kai, I think, that he sang, or I can't remember what, or maybe it was one of the extra tracks on NRG. There's one of the songs that Kevin recorded, there were, like, two versions, one that's with him on vocals, and he has a really good voice, so... Um, I actually sent him an email like a year ago saying I'd love to just find him. If he had any copies of the No Two album on CD, I'd pay him. But um, he's, I guess he's he's pretty private. But at TRS and Sunnydale, you know, this there's all these Kevin Gilbert connections with this record. But yeah, I mean, it was nice to get this. I didn't pay a fortune for it. Um, it's just a matter of sometimes these are ripping it or finding the whole thing online. I don't know if it's going to ever show up on Spotify. I suppose you don't know because it was released on A&M Records. So, I don't know. I mean, it's weird because that was released in a and m and yet, I mean, probably around the time of Toy Matinee, like, they probably, I don't know. I don't know how this got on a major label like A&M, but, um, since Kevin, since Giraffe wasn't, but, oh, and Chris Beveridge is on this, too. He plays bass, so it's like, 
you have this is basically like a giraffe album with two other guys with one Chris Kello. I don't you know he's one of the other vocalists and he plays keyboards. So, so the other big item that just came in the post and I was looking at the history. It, it was pre-ordered and I forgot my shirt. In fact, I'm gonna go get that quickly. Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com, Friday, uh, September 2nd, 2022. Hopefully can make two videos today uh, real quickly here. Um, I got some vacuuming to do. <laughs> but uh, the first video is for another video in the Vates Warning series, uh, the third, the last of the individual videos. Um, left off yesterday with uh, the 2013's album, Darkness in a Different Light. Um, Record that I feel a little differently about now, but um, you know, um, but I'm still kind of it's grow. I guess you could say it's like a second or third assessment growing, grow on me. But um, so, so yeah. Then um, rather than because they had done Arch Matheos, Jim Matheos, Arch Matheos, and those other guys had done it besides obviously John Ar Ray Alder. He was they were gonna maybe do another one. We knew about that, but you know, John Arch is. Not a full-time musician. <laughs> He's basically coming back even in the last 10 years or whatever. So they do more Fate's Warning, of course. Um, they may have done an anniversary show at that point. I can't remember. But anyway, so in 2016, they came out with Theories of Flight, Fate's Warning. Um, the same lineup from Darkness in a Different Light. Um, it was released officially, and I want to say it was kind of... Middle of the year, I mean, I just pulled that up and I had the wrong link. Studio albums. I want to say it's middle or later in the year. No, it was July 1st, actually. I was thinking it was later, but... Um, talk about the year in just a minute, about the, the calendar year. Here comes one of the kitty cats, Mocha. So, this record... Just say it, this record kind of blew a lot of people away. I remember there was a quote, I want to say it was from Joey Vera... It was Joey Vera, or it might have been someone outside of the band even, just raving about this album and specifically one track. And there was a, I don't think there was a, I want to say there was a lot of hype, but there definitely was hype. I, I kind of almost look at this record in a way like a response. It was Jim Matheos' response. I don't have the booklet. Shoot. The book, unless it's on the other one. Well, I'm lacking in the book at this point um it was jim matheos's response in a way to you know some of the critics including myself maybe to a to a small degree but probably other people more than media people kind of saying well the arch matheos record sympathetic resonance was more of his like primary work and the secondary work was darkness and different light which now i kind of i don't know if i really agree with that but this was like you know i'll show you my primary work right here and let's see what you think so and it was I want to say it's universally praised, but it's one of those one of these records that I can definitely say among the fan base, um, barely anyone I know didn't like it, and most people loved it. A lot of people, I think it was just it was a little bit like Marillion's this from the same was it the same year, twenty sixteen. No, it was the, the year before. I'm getting mixed up. No, it was twenty sixteen. 2016, I, a little bit like um, the Fear album. Not that wasn't universally praised, but um, why am I? Yeah, um, it was. Fear was the same year, actually. I think about that year. I don't think about that, but um, like a comeback album with their best record, and I don't know, whatever it was. And I kind of agreed with it. So I have the CD there, and um, I have the vinyl here. Well, I have another copy of the CD, of course, with the vinyl. They kept on like, doing that. They did it with Darkness in a Different Light. Um, and here's the gatefold vinyl. This was probably, yeah. Well, no. I was thinking it was the first album by Fate's Warning that I bought as a fan on vinyl. But wasn't true. Like... New album, rather, but uh, no, Darkness actually technically would have been, but um, um, so July of 16. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember listening to it that year a lot. I, I, yeah, a, to a whole lot. Um, I think after kind of dismissing and sort of, you know, not dismiss, but just not listening to, to Darkness in Different Light, this, this kind of, kind of just like, 
a little bit like with Marillion with marbles, actually, now thinking about it, where the moment that I would question how great this band or how much I love this band, they just put this out and I'd just be like, well, there's a reason why I love this band so much, because they put out a record like this. Um, and I'll say some of it was immediate. Some of the some music, some of the songs on here, it's just a black vinyl, nice labels. Um, theories of flight, you know, is it about, you know, I always thought about like the, the, um, the Wright brothers, you know, and, um, they do, he does use samples or he, you know, they use Jim specifically or there were a lot of samples used on this album. Not a lot, but there were some, um, but I mean, some of the songs were just decent and they grew to be better for me. Um, but some of them were just like immediate and I'll just say this right off the bat. The best piece on this album has been and always probably will be, and you know one of their best pieces ever is the, the light and shade of things. I just I can't get enough of that song. I, even though I have I'm guilty of not listening to it nearly as often the last three four years or whatever. But that year, yeah, I'd go back to it sometimes. And I saw when I saw them in 2019. I was just so enthused that they did, I knew they were going to play it live, and they did play it live when they they opened for Queensrÿche. But um. The, the passion, the emotion, especially on Ray's performance and some of Jim's performance, just the writing, the composition on that track. Even though it starts out a little slow, it, the build and the climax is so good, so passionate, so emo very much relatable. Like, it's very much of like the underdog, like, you know, that line that, that you can never get out of your head. Um, look at the lineup here. Um, the light and shade of things. Um, let's see if the lyrics are on here. I think they are. I think it's on the second half. Side two. Yeah, it'd be the first song on side two. So uh, of the first disc in effect. It's, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of lyrics to it. It just says um, the light and shade. I mean, it says the title track. Um, the heart that's inside. It's hard to find a heart. Find. It's hard to find your heart now. Forget, um, forget falling. Well, that's sort of in the, one of the verses. The light and shade of things. And although people change, I know it can't be for the light and shade of things. And I can't understand how one is more important than the other. One is more important. You know, that's one of those sort of trademark fate's warning lyrics. Um, Co-written by Matthäus and Alder. But, um, but I'll say this. So, like, the opening track um, from the rooftops got better with time, um, very energetic, very well, like it flows really well, and the closing track, The Ghost of Home, the 10 minute, 10 and a half minute song, those are the other sort of the epics, the mini epics, so none of them are super long, none of them are as long as Yet It Moves from Darkness in a Different Light, but um, those are sort of the, the most progressive in some ways, prog metal songs, but then you add, um, oh, I didn't even listen to the bonus tracks, I should have done that. Um, it's, I think these might be live. And I got someone doing some stuff down at the high school, of course, nearby me. Um, no, you add stuff like, um, White Flag or SOS and Seven Stars. Seven Stars is catchy and very passionate. It's just, that's what comes across. There's a, a huge amount of passion, which I don't always find on every single song they wrote, but it seems like every one of these songs had this level of passion. Um... And it just doesn't seem like there were two moments that I just sort of found to be filler, for lack of a better way to put it. And so I just, you know, I'll just say, so looking at 2016, there's an album that came out earlier in the year, The Seeker from Cloud Cult, which I absolutely loved, I still love, and was my first, my top record for a long time. But I just kind of wavered and, you know, kind of said, you know, is Fate's Warning really better? I think it, in Push Comes to Shove, I'm a slightly bigger Fate's Warning fan, so I love their new record, which is great, a little bit more. I mean, isn't that really fair? You had The Deer Hunter also, I can, that's hard to argue, or Marillion. You have all these favorites of mine. The Long Distance Calling Trips came out that year. Uh, there were a lot of great records that year, but this album, is just it just works. I don't know why, they just... It reminds me of the feeling I got when I heard Pleasant Shady Grain Disconnected. Like, I was in so awe, and then, like, these records are just like, is, how is Jim Matheos this good? He's just so good. The, the, the writing just works so well. Um, and so I just, you know, it, it's kind of sat there. Like, I, it's not, I mean, I just listening to it again today, I just, it, it hasn't, hasn't, I just, it's, age, it's only six years ago, but um, 
it's held up, you know, and I, I don't know, in like 20 years, am I still going to be listening to this album? Probably. It, it sounds very modern, but it also captures a lot of what they did, I want to say around that time, period of time. It, 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 if this album would have come out right after Disconnected, I wouldn't have been surprised. It, it It's very much in the same level of sort of composition, emotion, the performances, the sort of without really anything nothing really goes on too long um but it sounds slightly updated in a sense that it you could tell he'd been working in osi so he has like the samples at the end of theory at the title track or whatever um and, and some on the ghosts of home that, that, that i always think of that that line home again with the heavy guitar rift um there's just different moments and in, in, i mean the ghosts of home and yet it moves are similar in some ways i guess you could say but i think the ghosts of home works slightly better um, it's not as long. It it, it, it begins and ends in, in a better. It's composed a little bit better to me, but I know some people would disagree with that. But like stars, our eyes have seen. That's probably the one track over a little bit of time I grew to like more. I mean, I was saying like a lot of these songs were growers, but that one that was like the one red herring on this album for a while, and it's like no, it's a pretty good song. This record is is really good. So theories of flight from Fate's Warning. Um, and I know it's been talked about among Prague fans, not just their fan base, but Prague metal fan, like the Dream Theater fan base, just to be more specific, as as a notable, like significant or an accomplished, you know, great record late in a in a band or artist career. Because you don't see, I mean, some people thought, you know, and they said the same thing about Marbles with Marillion, even maybe to a smaller extent, like Fear, or even the new record, um, an hour before it started. I, I kind of can understand fear, but this album, and now listening to all these Fates Warning records over the last few month or whatever, is still a great record. Uh, but I mean, by comparison, I can say that it kind of it was almost because of the number of years that had passed. Like you know, it's only their second record since two thousand four, and that was twelve years, and um, it was almost like it was well worth the wait in a way. But I don't know. I don't know if. I would have expected Jim Matheos and the band to have this in them, you know, but they did, you know. Um, I mean, does it sound exactly like, say, A Pleasant Shade of Grey? Or, I mean, obviously, Bobby Jarvis on Beck is the drummer, so um, it doesn't, it's, the drum work is a little different. Am I, I'm trying to put two records in one sleeve, one jacket, that wouldn't be good. Um, no, I mean, again, I'd say there is a little bit of a 2010s, you know, influence and, and production value to it but as a whole i think it it it's like they didn't skip a beat i mean it's just the, the fourth side here on the vinyl and i don't know if my cd actually has this oh yeah it does these are acoustics i forgot about this and i've only listened to them i mean i probably did listen to them a couple times but uh firefly acoustics so they you know there's three different versions of firefly um seven stars acoustic another perfect day from fwx Pray Your Gods, and Adela, and Rain. Those last three, three tracks, I'm guilty of because I haven't listened to. So, I don't know. When I do one of the next couple reviews, I might have to just sort of <laughs> tack those on at the end. Because I haven't, you know, I probably did listen. Well, I, I know I did listen to them, as you can see, um, the, on the fourth disc. But um, it's been a long time. It's probably been since 2016 since I listened to them. Because I frequently would just grab mp3 i'd have i've had digital versions of this so i wouldn't i didn't i didn't hear them that much and, I, and they're not even on spotify i don't think so but anyway what's your take on a fate warning fans on theories of flight is it about accurately rated do you think it it's kind of lost a little bit of its luster over the last few years and with the last record that just came out that we'll be reviewing soon or is it pretty much some of the best stuff they ever did i mean uh, I just think the light and shades things that it's like a great record with one just absolute standout piece and just a lot of it's that the cla the classic case of a record that has the just the banger or the just the masterpiece track and then the the other tracks that are on it complement it so well it and in fact makes that whole record that much better because um, light and shade things you know it's just. It's there. It's you know. If I was choosing the top 100 songs ever, I think it would probably be on there for me. It's it's so good. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying it's the best thing Fate's Warning ever did necessarily. If I was doing a songs list, it's in the top 
five at least though so um for me and for a lot of people so thank you for watching uh please subscribe and subscribe see you next time